Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Fluttershy superior, all of their ponies inferior. <laughs> I agree with that. Also joining us is Jacob. Hello, everybody. It's been a while now. Mm hmm. It's been a while. So, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Cross Transformers. Uh, Friendship in Disguise, issue number 3. In this issue, Fluttershy and Discord's tea, part, that's right, tea Time is interrupted by Soundwave, and Rainbow Dash finds herself in a race against Windblade. So, <clears throat> if you guys have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Um, before we officially start, first impressions are in order, and Silver, what do you think? First half, really love the story, really love uh, Fluttershy's ability to reach any being. Even metallic animals are not uh, are not beyond her love and returning that love. But the second one, Rainbow Dash versus Windblade, there are some fun elements in this, don't get me wrong, but Windblade is not Windblade. Mm-hmm. This has never been Windblade. And now, well, there's, again, some trivia, but I can't help but feel like this is changing a Transformer to match uh, their pony counterpart, and that just does not work. Does not work. I I, 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 I feel you, and I get that. Huh. Anywho, um, Jacob, what about you? Well, the first story was good. As for the second one, <laughs> well... Uh... Apart from what Silver said, which is, which is probably which is probably going to explain what the whole deal is about to enlighten us both, or at least me anyway, there are a few uh, artistic things that feel a bit out of place, but we're going to get to that part. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And as for me, this comic was fun. I, I really love the Fluttershy part because everybody knows Fluttershy is best pwn. And the second part of the comic was a bit... I don't know. It felt like it was starting something, but it didn't really fire off, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> but anywho, um, before we start, Silver, Jacob, take a look see at the link I just posted. What is that? Uh, this this is related somehow. Bot bot card gallery. Ah, I don't suppose this means that they're making uh, trans- Magic of the Gathering is accepted Transformers? Yes, so in uh, in their recent uh, booster set release uh, called Brothers War, uh, you can have a chance to get a Transformers card uh, in this set. And if you notice, there's a, a swivel card or transform, which... Uh, transforms the card into their vehicle form. So, yes. Um, Magic the Gathering and Transformers are crossing over to make cards. I I, I thought it was fun because we're, we're wearing Transformers and this is a good place to insert it before we officially start. <clears throat> also, hmm, I'm curious. Sorry? They have a Transformer named Flame War. Flame? Brash Veteran. It looks like a female Autobot with a bow. Oh, that. Flame War. And She's a, a motorbike. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 I guess she's part of it. But uh, the one that bugged me a lot was Goldbug. What's wrong with that? He is... Well, granted, he's being shown alongside younger Daniel... Bit of a continuity glitch there, mm, yeah. but no, it's it's just that. Uh, why don't you bumblebee, bumblebee? Because they want to show him mature and grown up. Now put this is clown head and clown nose, <laughs> boys. <clears throat> but yes, um, just that I had to point out. And if you scroll down a bit. Uh, you'll see the alternate version of the cards, like more, how to say, um, full art and so on. And when I brought this up to a friend, and I say, hey, guys, did 
the plot look a bit evil in the um, alternate art. Like, uh, is the Autobot looking mean while the Decepticon looks good? And yeah. they told me it's just me. So, um, I'm asking other two friends, but what do you guys think? Well, I'm looking oh, at the, the sh- I'm looking at Optimus Prime that's purple and green, just like uh, oh, what was it? Devastator. Uh, no, Megatron, <coughs> the uh, first tank version that I mm-hmm. mentioned like a few weeks ago. He's a reverse. Uh, what you're looking, what you're looking at is the Shattered Glass uh, series. Oh, this is uh, how do I put this? This was. Introduced as toys for BotCon itself, where there's a, an alternate dimension where Decepticons are good and Autobots are evil. Oh, so I wasn't crazy then. Oh, no, you're far from... Well, okay. In this instance, i got to be specific, you're not crazy. <laughs> okay, cool. In other instances, I cannot... I cannot comment. <laughs> I... I'll take that as a win. Yay. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'm looking at this character Slicer, who is a recolor of Wheeljack, and wondering if they bro- if that's how they would have brought him in in season three. Hmm. Uh, is ooh Slicer uh, over here? He, he is a Decepticon. Uh, if I'm looking at those, ins- well, apparently I'm not looking at the insignias quite right. I see a cu- a scratched out Autobot symbol. Oh. It makes me think of the Transformers Armada, mm. uh, Rampage slash Wheeljack character. Ah, okay. So basically, recolor and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I'll just say this. Um, okay. So I wasn't crazy. Uh, the shattered glass thing is a what con thing where. Uh, in alternate universe, Autobots are evil and Decepticons are good. Oh, and that might explain why they went with Goldbug rather than Bumblebee. See, in Shattered Glass, Goldbug is a tyrant ruling a, a large section of Cybertron. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. So, so there's no there's no Bumblebee in Shattered Glass, so far as I know. And if I'm not mistaken... um. The Goldbug, he's also his own character in future renditions? Uh, yeah, there have been more than a few where he's, uh, where he's a separate bot. Mm, all right, all right. Also, just the alternate art, uh, the Shattered Glass for Soundwave. <laughs> that is just awesome, oh. man. Judo kick. <laughs> also, wh- why? Why the bandana? Why the bandana, man? Because he's a he's a master of cyber foo. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, let's get on with ponies then. Oh my! Ooh, <clears throat> yes. Oh, oh or, or maybe, maybe he's got infinite ammo. Infinite ammo. Yes, infinite ammo. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. uh. I'm missing oh, this man. reference. That is a reference. Whoever knows it gets 10 point. Yay. <laughs> oh, of uh, I, I know it, but I'm the one who made the reference. Does, does that count? Uh, yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm the DM. I can do anything I want. <laughs> oh, oh, you abuse of power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anywho, a pony comic now. So anywho, <clears throat> we start off the comic with Fluttershy and Discord having tea at their house, eating cupcakes and whatnot. And they're interrupted by a crashing sound. Uh, Fluttershy asks Discord, uh, I hope you're not tricking me. Um, like, that, that's not very nice. And we soon see the outside. Um, there was a crash and it seems to be Soundwave. Uh, Soundwave is out there. Uh, analyzing the area and trying to see if this place is good to conquer or siphon their um, what's it called that uh, power source energon yes <clears throat> so anywho uh, 
as the pony go out and take a look see, Fluttershy is kind of like scared because oh no, uh, well, what is this creature? He he is, um, kind of scary. But um, maybe I should go out there and try and say hello. And as she does that, Soundwave starts ejecting stuff. Oh no, whatever could he possibly be ejecting? Okay, well, dude, you're freezing. Just. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anywho, um, as Fluttershy is heading out, she sees Soundwave ejecting Laser Beak, Frenzy, Rat Bat, Ravager, and Deploy? Huh. All right. No. Well, that's the command. Oh, deploy. Deploy is the command. All right, cool. Yes, there's no there's no cassette button named deploy, so far as I know. Mm, oh. That would get very confusing. <laughs> All right then. And Fluttershy sees what he has pets. Yay! And Fluttershy brings some of her pets to um, the animals. And I'm guessing Angel Bunny's there, Master of Evil and whatnot. No. Yes. <laughs> Wait up! I'm sorry. Wait, who's the Master of Evil? Angel Bunny. Oh well, I mean he he's there to con- he could probably try to conquer Cybertron too. Yeah, true, true. But anywho, uh, Fluttershy introduces herself to Soundwave, and um, she, she's just being very nice and friendly here. Like there's there's no qualm with Fluttershy. Um, like, like Jacob mentioned before, uh, Soundwave just scans. Fluttershy seeing that oh she's no threat and suddenly Discord's come out and oh no uh, Discord is a significant threat and as the bots to well deal with it well actually um, it seems that the cassettes or well, what are they called Silver? Cassette bots Cassette bots really Well let's see here or I'm trying to recall if it's cassette bots and cassette cons, depending on your faction. Oh, really? No. Huh. I I would have thought that they have a specific name other than cassette, because cassette is kind of dated. Well, here we go. They've gone by several terms. So there's the Decepticon mini cassettes, Mm -hmm. also known as spy cassettes, recorder cons, Mm -hmm. and the Soundwave spy patrol. Okay. So... Oh... I just got one question. On, yes? Yeah. On the cover of the issue, we've mm. got friends in the... What's the bird again? Red Pat. Red oh, Pat. no. Um, laser Beak, I oh. think. Right. Who's the ape? Oh, yes. That one. Because it's not well, here. Well, first off, it... Well, actually, it's Ravage... Uh, he's the panther. And let's see here. And then, uh, his name is Beast Box. Beast Bo- I, I get it. <laughs> because it sounds like Beatbox. Because he's a tape deck. <laughs> yep. Look, here's the thing. If you, do a, if you do a search for how many Decepticon cassettes there are, Soundwave has an entire ecosystem in his chest. Oh. Um, I'm just saying. I mean, there's also there's also recolors of his uh, of characters, but on and on the go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I do remember the uh, pound, ground pounder one, like the um, uh, pile driver thing. You, you remember? Yeah, both both. Uh, Rumble and Frenzy had that ability, but that leads to perhaps the greatest debate in this entire flipping issue. Oh, wait, this one now. All right, okay. Um, have we reached it, or you want to hold? Oh, we've reached it. Mm-hmm. We've reached it. It's it's at notes the the uh, Soundwave names each cassette as he deploys them. Mm-hmm. He's saying Frenzy. Mm-hmm. But what color is the robot that the little robot that comes out? Um, I'm guessing purple. That's wrong. Uh, well, no, you're correct. That is 
But here's where the confusion sets in. In the G1 cartoon, Rumble was purple and blue. Frenzy was red and black. Mm -hmm. But the toy release, they switched it. Why? Uh, Miscommunication, I'm guessing. All right. So now you're kind of left wondering, well, are they right or wrong? I'm going to say I go by the G1 cartoon, so that is Rumble. But could it be... That is... uh, Sorry. So is there a chance that uh, this is... This this okay. Um, the bots are quote unquote G one, but they're kind of rebooted in their own universe kind of deal. Where yes, it's G one, but uh, Megatron has always been a tank. I will accept certain retcons, but on fr- Rumble versus Frenzy, I remain absolute. <laughs> okay, uh, I have no stock in this. So <laughs> it's part of my. <laughs> Fan rage. Oh, that's new. <laughs> oh boy. So, anywho, um, if you don't mind, I I'll continue on. If, as long as you refer to him as Rumble rather than Frenzy. All right, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. So, anywho, um, Soundwave starts to fight with Discord while the um, Soundwave spy bots um, try to deal with Fluttershy. And you can see that, oh no, they're ganging up. Uh, Frenzy here is trying to well, uh, intimidate Fluttershy. And, uh, well, I-, I think she's intimidated somehow, I, I guess. But uh, most of the focus right now is on Discord and Soundwave, where Soundwave is not detecting, like, he, he is not... Like, you remember last week when we were talking about... Um, not Soundwave, but um, who was his name? Silver, um, scientist, po- but <laughs> scientist bot Shockwave. Yeah, Shockwave. Like um, talking about Shockwave, not uh, making things logical. Yeah, th- this one is making Soundwave go like what? What is even going on? And he just says. Um, uh, decrease abs- uh, de- decrease absurdity or be deactivated huh I guess that means something it means that he's having enough of your your shenanigans ah uh, this is this de- 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 decrease or decrease make less of it uh, oh. tone it down Dial it back. Oh. Decrease volume. Okay, so that's what he... Oh, Soundwave is special. Also, uh, props to to Discord for mimicking Vinyl Scratch's uh, uh, mute, uh, speaker and music system toy. Yep. <laughs> uh, but it's more freaky because of the eyes. <laughs> Fr- freaky deaky. Mm-hmm. So anywho, while Soundwave deals with that, we see um, Fluttershy... Tr- being um, protective of her animal friends until she sees Ravager with a poo-poo on his nose. Oh no! And um, Rum- Rumble was it or Frenzy? I would. I request Rumble. All right, Rumble. Because the color color scheme. All right, uh, Rumble here says that's not. Uh, we don't get poo-poos. That's battle damage. Do you know what battle damage is? It looks cool. And Fluttershy just says, "Oh, uh, oh no, that's not no, that's not good. Here, I have some medicine for your boo boos." And um, Rumble here just says, "Ah, oh, no, pack off!" Like, and after that, we we see that um, Fluttershy just, <laughs> yep, uh, he, Rumble uh, knocks the ointment out of Fluttershy's hooves. Uh, Fluttershy goes poof um, she fell on her butt and oh no that was a big mistake and <laughs> this this part here like oh no <laughs> remember all those scared animals they're not scared anymore <laughs> and Rumble's going to get fucked up <laughs> big time <laughs> uh, yeah so 
Uh, it seems that Discord has the animal friends um, turn into metal and um, oh no, he's of, Dr. Eggman. <laughs> yeah, kind of beat up the um, so, kind of beat up some wave, yes. And for Rumble, um, <laughs> it seems that <laughs> um, we, we Rat Pat and uh, Ravager are having their t- uh, having a good time trying to kill. Uh, them and yeah, um, <laughs> uh, Rumble just says, "Okay, uh, I take it back. We're going to be friends. Yes, yes, friends, friends." Uh, and after hearing that, um, things calm down and everybody is being friends. They they talk to each other and whatnot, and uh, we we see them having good times. Yay! Um, this part I'm a bit confused. Uh, it is is um what is this? Megatron communicating with Soundwave? Yeah. Yep. He ca- call it in, saying, "Get, get back here for the fight." Mm, all right. So, uh, he says, "says yes," uh, eventually, and comic ends. And I just have to say that this this one is awesome. I I love I I love it. <laughs> and I'm sorry I didn't uh, let you guys have a word in. Um, Silver, what do you anything? <laughs> Well, several things. One, I appreciate Rumble is trying to be the classic defensive boy. It's like, I'm not playing with dolls. These are action figures. Okay. And uh, even his language is save it for the forum. So getting a little bit, <laughs> get, getting a little bit more uh, 2000s-ish. Mm-hmm. But here's the big thing. One... I love that uh, Fluttershy, even with robot animals, she has this magical connection that they were perfectly willing to turn on Rumble because, well, Rumble's not a, as uh, likable a sound wave. So they have no problem turning on him. Mm-hmm. But Soundwave is really the only Decepticon who could have this kind of connection. And that's because of, well, it is very much a part of who he is and and what he does. He's the only Decepticon that carries others in a body. He is basically the one who cares about them, uh, protects them, and he may be their commander, but he also cares about them as, as individuals. So he's the only Decepticon who might better understand this whole friendship gig. Your average Decepticon doesn't care about any of their fellows. Uh, depending on series. That's been a pretty consistent thing. It takes a while for uh, for Decepticon to care about someone other than themselves. Um, somehow I watch a, not really a documentary, but a video essay about uh, Transformers Armada. Armada was the Japanese one, right? Uh, it was on our, it was a Japanese one, yeah. Yeah, and where I'm guessing this has to do with Starscream. Yes. Yep. Yes, that's that's uh, that was probably the most emotionally diverse Starscream's ever been. Mm-hmm. And wow, like uh, played well, and I, I, you know what, I kind of love it. Like having a complex character like that is very good. But he was in the minority. True. In fact, even after his death, most Decepticons were just talking uh, smack about him. <clears throat> Until Megatron smacked them around. Actually, that's what happened to Ravage's nose. It turns out Megatron is just a very aggressive booper. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not, right? Boop. <laughs> Boop. Oh, boy. Uh, anything else, Silva? Mm, that's the long and the short of it. I mean, I just love this co- this issue for uh, or this chapter for Fluttershy's ability to redeem any being, <laughs> even even one of the most competent Decepticons. I mean, Soundwave is the go-to guy for Megatron, and there might be uh, more effective Decepticons, more uh, adept at sneaking, but they all live in his chest. Also true. 
So really, you don't need Starscream or the others. All you need is Soundwave. Uh, but still, you do need more than Soundwave. Like you, you need some of the grunt and manpower for stuff. Well, now you sound like a Hasbro marketing department. Well, we need to sell toys. We need to sell uh, reprint cards that are not legal playable for about a thousand dollars for six packs. Yes, that's what we need to do. We need to sell that. He gets. And I'm not even joking. It sounds like a joke. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> Can you tell? No, not really. Uh, anywho, Jacob, what do you think of this one? Well, I don't <laughs> think that there's any, actually anything more that I can say. Let's work. I don't said already. Although I do have this... Uh, I've always wondered how is it that Soundwave is able to turn from a... What, what's it like? Uh, um. three, three feet... Uh, no, wait. <laughs> 10 feet tall machine into basically a boom box the size of a suitcase. Where does all yeah. that mass go? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that, that's how... Oh, ma- for, go ahead. Sorry. Mass displacement, a common thing amongst Transformers. Mm-hmm. There's always been the question, hasn't it? Like the, the most egregious one was Megatron. Was he? Uh, because, because he turned into a gun? Yes. Because he, okay, here's the thing, um, like like Jacob mentioned before, where does all the mess go? And if you take a look, see at Megatron, he transformed into a German Luger, I think, and use and let Starscream use him. And when you think about it, when you look at it, like, is it Megatron huge? What? What? Wait, what? Well, it's an ability, somehow. I mean, back in the days, during the 80s, mass was not an issue. So, as long as it was cool, it was awesome. But nowadays, we science, science fiction geeks and whatnot ask a lot of things. And the, the um, doctor has, has it right, like, it's bigger on the inside. Done. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, the doctor? Yes, who? the who. Oh. When people ask, oh, how, how, what, what, this doesn't make sense. Like, this is a box. How, how, what, what, why is big? Like, uh. And his answer is just begun inside. Don't ask. You mean Tartarus? Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, magic, whatever. Yep, but still, uh, if the doctor doesn't want to explain it, he'll just say that. It's easy. But anywho, oh boy, let's continue on with the next comic. Uh, the Flying Foxtrot. Man, this one, hmm. this this one. Um, I'm just going to say that I, I like the art in the Fluttershy comic. It's very interesting. And the artist is not a pony artist I know. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, for... the, wait, what did the, the first art, and this artist do already? Uh, Jack oh, Lawrence. Jack Lawrence. Oh, uh, he's the one who did the first issue between uh, Rarity and RC. Mm. So, yeah, um, basically, yeah, like I mentioned before, um, not a name that I know well for ponies, but yeah, um, coming back to ponies, did a good job. Yeah. So, anywho, let's start off. Sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> later when you compare the way that ponies are drawn and compared to what Transformers look like, uh, oh boy, you can what, see the stark difference. The flying fox trot. Yeah. All right. Then. So, anywho, um, let's let's start. We see Rainbow Dash relaxing in the clouds, um, having her apple and whatnot, until there was a boom. Not a sonic rain boom, but a jet boom. And Fluttershy, sorry, um, Rainbow Dash looks to the sky and sees Windblade. Um, they both love their wings. Like, wow, awesome. I, I, I like your wing. You like my wing. That's cool. And uh, Windblade asks, uh, what's your deal? And Rainbow Dash just says, I'm the fastest flyer in all Equestria. And uh, Windblade just says, ah, really now? Because I just did a 
um, Sonic. I just broke the sound barrier with uh, my jet engines. What can you do? And Rainbow Dash says, like, I can do a Sonic Rainbow. Can you do that? And they say the only way to deal with this is with a race. Now, on the next panel, we get into a race. We see in the starting line, there's... Robot name, I got no idea. Rainbow Dash, Green Blade, and Horse Robot person, I got no idea. And a Spitfire recolor? We were actually talking about them at the end of the first tissue, but it was so long we kind of uh, forgot already about them. Yep. So. Well, for, for reference, I believe that the two horse themed. Uh, Transformers are Mock Kick and Strata. Oh. Mock Kick is blue, Strata is black? Uh, well, that's one interpretation. There are several. There's also a Twilight Sparkle uh, Transformer out there. Yep, I remember that. Oh, God. Uh, anywho, uh, just forget what we just say about their name because they don't play a role at all. <laughs> And Were they even that, necessary to the plot at this point? They could have just hit two, uh, two people uh, competition instead of this whole thing. Oh, yeah, true. Why, why are you telling everyone to ignore my trivia knowledge? If this were geeks who drink, I'd be cleaning house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not saying that... Uh, you, you, they, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm saying that the comic doesn't use it to great effect. Like... It doesn't use it I, at all. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll just... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say it now before I forget. I, I have a tendency to forget. Um, spoilers, they don't matter at all because the whole race is just about Fluttershy and Wing... Sorry, uh, Rainbow Dash and Wing Blade tr- flying and fast. Just flying. Uh, what does the horses do? They gallop? I, I guess. And that... Uh, Spitfire recolor, I number five. Like she's there, I I think she does something. Not. Well, I'll also point you to the to the background stands where Twilight, Applejack, Rarity, Pinky, Fluttershy, and Spike are. They're cheering them on. Is the step? Where? No, there's the oh the upper right of the stands. Mm-hmm. Sadly, no, I don't think so. Uh, A little too dark on the blue. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Doesn't Claire... It's Claire's got more yellow eyes. Uh, gray hair or something. Well, I drew close up with slightly dark, lighter gray hair, so... Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean... It just annoys me that this race... Uh, like, yeah, I, I get the idea. You want to race, we want to see who's the fastest and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. But why in... <laughs> Why you involve... involve people a lot other than them? Yeah, I mean, it... okay. This brings back to this brings me back to the old uh, race in Whitetail Woods. Um, the what was that? Fall weather friends. Yeah, fall weather friends. The episode where oh Rainbow Dash and Applejack are racing, but Applejack has to Rainbow Dash has to uh, not use her wings because that's cheating and whatnot. Ah, so that that reminds me of that. But now. Fluttish, sorry, Rainbow Dash has her quote unquote rival that she can just fly with and have at it. But no, they decided to kind of make a you know, grand spectacle where it doesn't even matter. Okay. But anywho, um, uh, any anyone to add? Any, anyone want to add anything more? Nah. Uh, I will save my thoughts for later. All right, yeah. So, anywho, <clears throat> as we start the race, we'll see, we see um, Rainbow Dash and Wing Blade hop into the air, flying, and um, Wing Blade doing cool stunts. Rainbow Dash uh, doing so too, and. Um, it seems that Wingblade is getting the lead and we see Rainbow Dash looking down saying um, I can't let my friends down um, I, I need to be I, I need to go fast I, I need to go fast and she does 
But before uh, sh- we we can see who wins the race or whatever it is, uh, we see some kind of Decepticon flying troop. Oh man, I I, I had what was their code name again? I forgot. Hmm. But anyway. I'm sure Silver Red mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can help you out there. Uh, so. Front and center, we have Misfire. He was introduced with the Target Masters. Mm -hmm. uh, Transformers that had guns that also transformed into little robots. Uh, Hitmasters? So, no, that's that's when the head transforms. Target Masters is when the gun transforms. Uh, mm, Okay. So that's the big purple one. Then, uh, I see it more as sort of a pinkish purple, but yes. Then the yellow one is Sunstorm, the green one is Acid Storm, and the blue one is Ion Storm. Seen very briefly uh, in the season in a season one episode, as they they're known as the Acid Rain Trio because they seeded the clouds with acid rain atop Cybertron. And that's a good thing. Well, they were trying to use it to kill Autobots, oh, so for them it was a good thing. All right, all right. I, I thought they were kind of stuff like. <clears throat> all right, all right. Wait, all right. Did, you, did you say the blue one was named Ion Storm? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I see he's got the inflated ego. <laughs> You'll notice that his head looks too big compared to the rest of his body. Uh, oh, and if I may have spoken too soon, the yellow one may be Nova Storm rather than Sunstorm. There was a, there was a different yellow seeker named Sunstorm in a previous comic. Ah, uh, all right. Also, this were, if I wasn't mistaken, right, like, I could be wrong on, in terms of which show I watch, but these are Starscream's minions or companions, right? Like, the Seekers? The Seekers. Uh, they're the, well... The truth is that they're kind of the faceless grunts of the Decepticons. You just have more and more of them all over. Mm-hmm. And they all look like Starscream. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, one of the few reasons why this is, is because that, uh, if I wasn't mistaken, all flyers are only in the Decepticon uh, party, if I wasn't mistaken. There are a few exceptions that prove the rule. Mm, yeah, that's what I heard. And then you have some betrayers or some turncoats like... Uh, who was that guy again? Isn't yeah. Swoop able to fly? Since he's a Jetfire, sorry. Uh, planes we're talking about. Yep. Okay, so uh, what's the deal but- with uh, Windblade then? Uh Silver, I think it's about time you explain what's uh, when you said earlier that this Windblade is completely different than what Windblade's supposed to be. Alrighty, here's the thing. Windblade is uh, an Autobot who can transform into a jet. That's common. She's a very recent addition, relatively speaking, to the Transformers franchise. And IDW and any cartoons from more more recently have done their best to promote her like crazy. Mm -hmm. But she's known primarily for two things. She's she's a city speaker, which means that she can communicate with the giant Titan Transformers like Metroplex. City-sized Transformers. And she sort of acts as a median. She's also known as being a bit more... Uh, lighthearted, but also nurturing. She's never been, outside of maybe Robots in Disguise, uh, the sequel to Transformers Prime, Mm -hmm. she's never been a real gotta go fast, prove I'm the best, hotshot, ace character. Her goal has always been very different. So this issue, it feels like they've changed her personality to make her arrival to Rainbow Dash. Hmm. Didn't Wingblade... Uh, no, that was Archie, sorry. I was thinking about the f- first issue of Transformers. No, yeah. So, this is... Hashtag not my Wingblade. Yeah, it feels that way too. Like, 
from what uh, the Netflix version of Transformers that I watch. Uh, she's always been um, good, really good friends to Bumblebee, and they kind of have each other's back and whatnot. Yep, uh, Cyberverse. Mm. <coughs> so, anywho, um, I- I'm just going to speed through because uh, things are going to get silly. <clears throat> so, anywho. Um, the Decepticon fires on the heroes and um, fire by the way and we see that Rainbow Dash is laughing at them before rockets reach them like wait what I I don't get this am I missing something like (coughs) is there a panel that was supposed to be there before this well, no, it's just uh, Misfire's trying to intimidate, and Rainbow's having none of it. But they're, they're firing, like... They didn't fire, yeah, they're just prepping up. No, I mean, I they're, mean they, 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 they fire, like, take a look-see, like, uh, after uh, Misfire uh, taunts them and whatnot, he pulls out the gun and pew-pew. I mean... No, uh, that's just the demons that's showing that they're charging up. They're about to fire. If, if they were I'm already firing f- my laser. Yeah, exactly. If they already fired, then I'm pretty sure there would have been sound effects on the panel. Um, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if they're doing a Mega Man charge, I, I guess. Well, well, what I find funny is that Ion Storm is tw- has turned his blaster upright, which I take as our version of holding a gun sideways. <laughs> yeah, gangster like. Now, if something's off, like all the other, uh, Decept- all the other plain Decepticons have uh, lasers on their uh, side arms, but he's holding a gun. Uh, that's because Why? it's a different kind of plane. And then there's uh, there's Nova Storm, who isn't even looking. He's going through a phase, like, well, I'll fire if I gotta, but I'm not going to clench my fist. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's for losers. <laughs> I, I, Iron Storm, like, the only explanation I have for you guys for why Iron Storm is shooting the way he's doing is because uh, if they put it as it as how the others are, it's cutting off the panel. So, to rectify that, they put it up. <laughs> Which is dumb, by the way. Well, I just, th- I prefer to think that he's trying to be all hipster and, and cyber ghetto. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> <clears throat> so anywho, um, after that confusion is done, we see Rainbow Dash mocking them, and um, Wingblade is scared. Oh no, I'm scared because we have four Decepticon bad guys going to take me out. Oh no, whatever should I do? Rainbow Dash just says, "Have you, have you ever tried to pull a flying foxtrot?" and Wingblade here says, I got no idea what you're talking about. Even better, follow me. And somehow, Rainbow Dash maneuvers in and out and whatnot and flying through the Decepticons and keeping their distance. And um, who now? Um, Miss Fire just says, Fire at them! Fire at them! And... Wimbley just says, oh, we're too close to evade now. And Rainbow Dash says, oh, exactly. Go left. You go left, I go home. (laughs) And with that, they do so. And the the Decepticon fire at them. And I don't know what happened here. Um... Art is <laughs> okay. I I know what they're going for. It's a very cool move, but the sequential art here does not portray the awesomeness of what they're what Rainbow Dash is thinking. <clears throat> so, I- long story short, as the missile comes to them, they wait a bit before it hits on impact, and I'm guessing it's heat-seeking missiles because. As they, as the missile hits towards them, Rainbow Dash and 
uh, wing blade flies towards the Decepticons and passing through them and the missile hits them instead and with that they finish the race in a tie I call bullcrap on that but coming ends <laughs> Uh, Jacob, right, so before we go, uh, hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you think? Well, uh, first of all, let's go back to the moment where uh, Misfire orders um, his gang to fire the uh, heat-seeking missiles. I want you to look at the art and the composition on how it looks. This this panel bothers me. Like, notice how the boy looks big, <coughs> but his hand looks small in comparison. I think the artist made an oops because the hand is being brought into the foreground but isn't made bigger and though it's being pushed forward to the viewer. Uh, I wouldn't say that is a big deal so much because uh, as you as you keep on reading, you see a lot of inconsistencies throughout the comic. Like, like even the first panel at the very first where you see Rainbow Dash... Um, her hooves like that seems very unnatural and whatnot. Like, yeah, that they ain't look, they ain't looking good. And as you keep on reading, you you can clearly tell that this this might their this might be their first time drawing the Transformers ponies. I guess. I mean, it yeah, feels that way. This, yeah, you can notice the stark difference between Transformers and ponies. I mean, uh, even the. The previous author, well, what was it? What's his name again? The, the one that did uh, the Fluttershy issues was the one with Reggie and RC. Despite the the art and ponies being sort of minimalistic, there's it's still good. But this one just it feels kind of flat, honestly. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah. Anything else? Mm. No, I think that's it. Silver, what about you, my friend? Well, do you wonder why it's not called the Fantastic Flying Foxtrot? Why? Because Rainbow has no more Fs to give. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so, I mean, I already said that this is not... Uh, <clears throat> this is not... Uh, Windblade. They've changed her very much to to match up with Rainbow Dash, and now, uh, well, the villains aren't that intimidating. They're meant they're meant to be more of a Scooby Doo esque villain, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just be a little silly. I... Now the artist is Priscilla Tramontano, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to look up if she's done anything before or in a while. Priscilla Tramontano. The comics. Yet she has done, it looks like a lot of at least covers for Transformers. Mm -hmm. But she's not as familiar with ponies. She's done Transformers, she's done Godzilla, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. I'm also seeing a bit of TMNT. Possibly. Oh, Black Dynamite. <laughs> awesome show. Sorry, go ahead. Gijo. So, ponies are, are very foreign to her. And the thing is, especially for comic artists, drawing these ponies, which... Normally, you're trying to create the illusion of depth, but My Little Pony kind of embraces its 2D style. It can really throw people off. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, Tony Fleece talking about this, saying it's really hard to not... In trying to draw one style of character, you not let it influence another. So you... So it's a challenge to not have a Transformer who looks too soft or a pony who's too blocky. Hmm. Because and you're trying to create, you're trying to draw two two different franchises in different styles. And here's the thing: like uh, looking through her Instagram, 
she can do cute animal things. Like I'm looking at a picture of Sonic here, and yeah, it looks cute. It looks round and sharp way it needs to be. So she can do the whole um, fluffy animal thing. So drawing ponies shouldn't be a problem for her. Well, I let's see. I'm on a different web page than what you're checking out. But I question, you know, what was the deadline ah. on getting this to um, uh, how much practice should she have drawing these ponies? There are so many factors of which we're just not aware. Also true. Also true. I mean, in terms of what she can really do, like um, a picture, uh, okay, on her Twitter right now, uh, a picture of the Adam family, like she just did on October 1st. It looks good. Yeah. So, I mean, she does know how to draw. Um, even what uh, Cult of Lamb art that art for that yeah cute and fluffy knows how to do it well there you go so not my favorite of the uh, of the Transformers My Little Pony crossovers just not my thing yeah I agree although I think this is more down to the writer than the artist in this case um, yeah, I have to agree on that one. I mean, uh, art art is one thing also, but I, I guess the story plays a part. Like without the without a good story, the art is just there. Yeah, Sam Max wrote uh, this one story, and it's the same writer that also wrote the Pinkie Pie and the. What was that one other one's named? Uh, uh, Shockwave? No, uh, the small blue one. It's supposed to be a kid. Uh, um, I remember that one. That was episode. Uh, that was issue number two. And yeah, I forgot. <clears throat> so, do you remember what that small blue uh, Autobot is called? Yep, just un momentito. The supposed RC's uh, daughter. Uh, Gage. Or if I recall that. Gage, Gage. Gage. Okay, there we go. Gage. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's the same writer, so I guess uh, it kind of shows. Not really. I, I, I don't see that. <sighs> but 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 anywho, um, anything else silver to add? Nope, I've said my piece. Oh, As for me, uh, this comic here kind of felt meh, and here's the reason why. You you set up the comic by saying that, but uh, by showing Windblade saying that I just uh, break broke the sound barrier with a. Um. So, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I just broke the sound barrier with my jet engines. What can you do? Um, and Rainbow Dash just says, "I can do a sonic rain boom." And hey, look, is that a Chekhov's gun? I see. And we're hoping to see uh, Wingblade being wow by the sonic rain boom. You know, like it's 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 one of those cool things that I guess Rainbow can do now on a whim. And it, it will be awesome to just have her reaction, you know, like, oh, wow, that was awesome. You, you, you ponies sure have s um, moxie. And but apparently somebody put the lock on that gun. <laughs> yep. And the the and and you, as you get to see um, them race, it's not even a race. It's just a panel of oh, look, see, Wayne Blade can do stuff like she's doing a barrel roll and rainbow dash is like oh i'm making spinning circles around you and whatnot and like it goes on and on until the comic gets cut by hey look we have goons let's introduce more decepticons because we can't have a comic without decepticons like <sighs> i mean it, mm, silver just a question. Is there a flying Decepticon that's kind of 
their their gimmick is need the need for speed. Hmm. Not that I'm aware. I mean, most Decepticons take flight for granted. It's it's funny enough the ground based Stunticons that are usually the need for speed. Add them. Yeah, let's just put them into the mix. You know, like oh man, I want to go speed. I'm going to go fast. I gotta go fast. Yeah, I gotta go fast. Don't me. But no, no, no. <clears throat> so yeah. Not my favorite. Agreed. No, my favorite. It's. It's not. I want. I. I don't see bad because it has. Some things in it, but. Uh, you know, uh, final thoughts of silver. Well, for this issue, I definitely enjoyed. Uh, Fluttershy interacting with Soundwave and the cassette bots or recordicons or whatever you want to call them. That was the stronger story of the two. Mm -hmm. uh, Rainbow Dash versus Windblade has some fun cameos by other characters and makes me wonder if this is set much later than the rest of the series as all the ponies are gathered for this race. Uh... Granted, there isn't a stable portal until much later, but then again, this could be much later. So that gave some food for thought, but as an issue in and of itself, uh, Rainbow versus Windblade just didn't have the the teeth for it. Just a random question I've been thinking. It didn't grip me. Uh, just a random question I've been thinking. Uh, would it would would the Rainbow story be better if it was put first? No, it still would have been changing Windblade to match Rainbow Dash. But would it, like, right now, uh, the way I'm looking at it is right now, is that the Fluttershy and Soundwave comic kind of overshadowed this one. So would you think that having them change places would give the Windblade Rainbow Dash a chance? No, although I think I would end this review a bit more positive because we came off the Fluttershy version. Right. But the problems with Rainbow and and uh, Windblade are inherent to the story. It's not a it's not a question of prioritization or hierarchy. Mm, okay, just just a random idea I had, and yeah, honestly speaking, the story was not great. <clears throat> But anywho, um, is that all silver? That's it for me. All right, you know, and Jacob, what do you think? Final thoughts? Well, I, yeah, I pretty much have to agree with silver. It's it doesn't matter if the flat, uh, Fluttershy story was for, would be first or last. The Rainbow Dash would still be have the second effect. I, I mean, the same effect. And you might as well compare it to issue number two with uh, Weirdluck and Spike and uh, Pinkie Pie and... Uh, I keep forgetting what his name is. Her name is again. Gage. Uh, Gage, yeah. Because the the writer's the same and in comparison to that one, the Spike Weirdluck is still mm. better in comparison. So, uh, I... So, yeah, I... There's not much to say. I'd say the Fluttershy uh, story beats that one way out of water. But I do wonder what would have happened if Triptakan was in the, in the first issue, in the Fluttershy issue. Triptakons? Triptakon. The Decepticon City Transformer. He's a Tyrannosaurus. Oh, that one. And a massive one at that. That will be very interesting. Oh, that would be very interesting. I mean, uh, you, you'll have Fluttershy and Wingblade trying to talk the city down, huh? Yeah, that would have, that would be a better use for Windblade. <clears throat> true, 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 true. But anywho, let's wrap it up. <clears throat> so, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thepeterjamil.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. So show us the Twitter account is at the Mia Show and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on uh, Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. 
Uh, my YouTube channel will also have links to uh, Patreon support or Kofi. And let's see here. And you'll find I am posting comic reviews as they come out on Equestria Daily with G5. And, well, it's inclusion of a certain G G4 character. Oh, no. Oh, it looks like we need to catch so. up. <laughs> oh, y'all are behind. I'm going to be running laps around you at this oh, no. point. Oh, Silver's becoming Wingblade. He's showing us up. Oh, no. <laughs> and let's see. You can also do a search on YouTube for Silver Quill and After the Fact, and he shall find me. If you do just search for After the Fact, you'll find a news program which uh, I'm sure is more relevant to the times, but not as entertaining. Harumph. Aren't they from India, if I'm not mistaken? Quite possibly. I, I don't think any news that's not local to you is relevant. Hmm. Oh, no, I hold a different philosophy. Uh, news is relevant because what happens in one part of the world eventually has an impact on other parts. That's a good way to look at it. Hmm? All right. Anyway, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Jakob von uh, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading Story Thermal Rise, you can find it on uh, filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, <laughs> You can find it on the tales of the ashes dot com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on live dot com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon dot com slash champion show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank you, I would like to thank you, Jacob. Lucky night. Myself, Flag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. And uh, talking about the thank yous, I've done that. Yay! I, I, I am. My memory course is corrupted. So, anywho, um, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vequil. I'm in Jakob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs> So, oh boy, the fourth is just gonna be something. Ian Flynn's back and so is James Asmus, the ones that did the first issue of the series. That will be something. That will be something. <laughs>